Um, I, I don't hate my sister. I've, uh, tried to be closer to her over the years because, uh, we had an estranged childhood. My, my grandmommy and granddaddy loved and nurtured me, um, so much. And Jennifer did, did not get that special time, um, like I did almost every day for a number of years. I would stay at my grandma and granddaddy's and grandmommy and I were so close. She took me with her places and Jennifer never got that. And, um, my mom, I think, felt like Jennifer was the good child because she, Jennifer was not difficult to parent. I was. I was all over the place. I was sneaking out, drinking liquor, just causing all sorts of problems. Um, precocious, you could say. But, you know, Jennifer has some good points. One thing was she was crazy about not ever letting me touch any of her clothes. I think we had issue at the house. Um, one time I was chasing after her to beat her up. And, um, let her sit on her, you know, and hold her. Um, we would, that's our, our way of fighting. But she slammed the door on my fingers and, oh, it hurt so bad. Um, but I, I did a lot of counseling and I put my family stuff. It was bad dynamics. It was pretty dysfunctional. And as people say, well, you guys look like the perfect family. And I'm like, you have no idea. My dad's got bipolar. My mom's agoraphobic. Um, you know, smoking two packs of cigarettes a day. I think Jennifer's teacher said you can tell Jen Jennifer's mom smokes, which was not nice. Um, but over the years, you know, we've tried. But um, my reality that I live with and in with a bipolar illness and everything I've been through. And I, I was also my dad's favorite growing up, which she, she despised me because of that. Because that was her daddy and I was closer to his family. But um, I did, I've given her books and records, and she seems to not value them so much as I do. Because if it's music I like, that is so important to me. The music or the movie or the book. And she just doesn't have that. That's It's not important to her. And she's actually lost CDs and books that I've given her. I even bought her this special book that she never even, Psychology of How to Be a, the Wild Sister, like it, throw off your, but she's very much in a yoke of a type of way that she wants to be. And, and, um, it's a safety, like, cause she's afraid of things. Um, a lot of people do that. They stay in this bubble and they feel like they're protected. Um, um, you know, her husband gives her a pretty good salary. He's a doctor. And so she's, done some things I disagree with and she knew it because she didn't tell me she was putting an addition on the farmhouse I just went out there and I felt like I was like an Alice in Wonderland going down the the rabbit hole but um she she seems very innocent to me and I don't want to spoil her innocence and if I say a cuss word, it makes her very uncomfortable and she wants to kick me out of the house because that is not the reality she wants for her children. Which got, you know, the amount of cushion and protection that she's given to her children. Um, it's an upper middle class thing. That's the other thing is she took her kids out of the high school to go to Lynchburg and go to high school. And I know the reason is because there's a lot of, there are a lot of black people settled in Buckingham. They used to, former slaves that stayed there. Um, so she wants to protect her kids at all costs. And I'm protective of my kids, but to a lesser extent, because I trust they're going to use their judgment. But Jennifer doesn't have the knowledge of that judgment because she's never been through it. So it doesn't scare me. You know what I mean? Like things scare her, but they don't scare me. I think I scare my sister. Like uh, we're at a family party and I was feeling uncomfortable. I was having some intestinal problems um, with my medicines. But instead of saying, hey guys, I'm constipated. It was my mom was dying of cancer. And so I, I relayed a feeling of angst without actually spoiling people's, you know, that's not a good thing to talk about. But nobody had any sympathy or empathy for me. In fact, I was assaulted by my sister because I said, Alan is a heroin addict and Jerry's an alcoholic. Crash that party. And my kids were fine. Hillary's a little control freak too. She, she doesn't know how to handle it because she moved out so early. Um, and J Hillary thinks she's seen me manic, but she really hasn't. Um, she h runs and hides at any little thought of it that she can't handle it. And I've been telling her, I'm like, go to NAMI. 
but Morgan has been through it. My, like my oldest daughter, I slapped a few times and I was like, why am I doing this? That's what my mother did to me. So by the third kid, there was no corporal punishment. There was just talking. And one time Morgan got mad at me. Well, she would get mad at me, but she came in and she broke the lamp. I had a little lamp and she broke it and she broke my, I had saline like antiperspirant. It's pretty expensive. And she just came in and broke it. And I was like, I didn't want to fight. I didn't want to retaliate. I wanted to let her express her anger and emotion, even if she punched a hole in the wall, which I didn't agree with. But she fixed it, um, broke the vacuum. Uh, and I think she learned a lot of this at her dad's house. Because um, one time we were in an apartment and she pushed and shoved me because I didn't have anybody to stand up for me because Jerry wouldn't. He, he had the inability to ever say no. And that's to teenagers, people. You got to say no.